Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. And again, the floor will be given to Nunchi to make his final statement. You may now continue. Je vous en prie. Nunchi. Nunchi. The issue of evacuation. J'en viens à la question de l'évacuation. As I have testified before the chamber during the last couple of years, after the liberation on 17 April 1975, all city dwellers were indeed evacuated out of the cities. However, it was not a forced evacuation. There were two main reasons that leaders decided to rely upon in so doing. Une telle décision pour deux grandes raisons. First, premièrement, it was the fear of American bombardment. Des bombardements américains on the cities after the Lonol government contre les villes defeated. Après la défaite du gouvernement de Lonol, and this was one reason that the leadership and Cambodian people believed. À laquelle croyaient les dirigeants et le peuple cambodgien. The United States would renew its bombardment in many cities. Leur bombardement contre de nombreuses villes et en particulier contre Phnom Penh. They believed that because the United States had previously dropped several tons of bombs in Cambodia, the second reason was that war had been waged in Cambodia for over five years. deuxième raison, c'était la guerre. Through this experience of war, Cambodia faced many challenges. Avait été mené including au Cambodge pendant cette période de guerre, and food shortage was a main problem le a connu that de needed to be resolved urgently, as it was related to the life of people. At that time, Cambodia did not receive any foreign aid or le assistance. Le reçu aucune aide étrangère. Facing such pressing circumstances, the CPK leadership devised a plan to evacuate people du PCK to regions and provinces where they were rich in economic resources, task and unhasked rice that could feed the evacuated people. Des ressources in turn, économiques they plus would be required to join in the production activity for self-sufficiency and country reconstruction. Permettant de nourrir, in relation to evacuating people from Phnom Penh City, en contrepartie, the les standing gens committee instructed the central committee to convene a meeting to prepare for evacuation. Concernant l'évacuation de Phnom Penh, all le members of the Central Committee attended that meeting, and I recall that au comité central, the North West Zone agreed to receive 1.5 million evacuees. Je me souviens que la zone the East, the South West, and the Central Zone agreed to take the rest of the evacuees. For the plan implementation, each zone had the autonomy to coordinate amongst themselves to facilitate the evacuation. They had to provide instructions to cooperatives 
to assist the evacuees from Phnom Penh Les zones devaient donner instruction aux coopératives without any discrimination against them aucune discrimination With the two reasons, Compte tenu de ces the deux evacuation raisons, proceeded on a voluntary basis without coercion, sans coercition, violence, sans violence, or any killing. Et sans aucune exécution. It was implemented via clear information being explained to, to the people de la to understand the risk of being bombarded by the United States owned cities and the need le to resolve the living condition of the American. people and self construction of the country. Il a été expliqué il fallait At that time, le people understood the, gen the dangerous situation la and the pays. pressing need for the country. À Especially people supported and loved the revolution. Ils ont qu il Gradually, people left the cities in accordance with the explanation and appealed by the CPK. Regarding this point, I would like to respond to the co-prosecutor's argument. argument de they allege that the CPK surrounded Phnom Penh City and that led to food shortage. They also allege that shelling Lunar's military bases in the city was an inhumane act. De les bases de en ville. However, the co-prosecutors failed to mention that Lunol soldiers, equipped with artillery provided by the United States, emptied mainly millions of shells and together with more than half a million tons of bombs dropped by the United States, they devastated the country as houses, properties, animals and farms were destroyed. Especially tens of thousands of people were killed, including the elderly, children and women. Isn't this an inhumane act or a crime? Par les the le bombs pays, that the United States dropped on des Cambodia des biens, des animaux, des fermes, were three times des more de than those de dropped parmi on Japan des âgées, des et des during the Second World War. Humain, les Américains ont largué sur le Cambodge trois fois plus de bombes des CPK also considered Phnom Penh city the violence. Ah, my apology. The CPK did not regard the city the violence as enemies. Contrary to the allegations made by the prosecution. On the on the other hand, those Phnom Penh city dwellers Les were mostly workers, peasants, petty bourgeois and intellectuals, intellectuals whom the CPK needed and needed to gather their forces and strength in order to build the revolution. De leur force pour construire la revolution. I also would like to respond to the co-prosecutor's allegation that the DK regime was a slave state. Comme quoi le du it is simply not true. Ce pas vrai. I would like to inform my compatriots that CBK did not struggle to liberate the country for the purpose of transforming its people into slavery as a lead d'asservir la population 
On the contrary, the CPK liberated the people from slavery. We all should have known that before the liberation on 17 April 1975, majority of the patients were poor could not support themselves on a daily basis and faced grave difficulty in their living condition. The Lunal Authority at the time failed to provide a proper public service and social welfare to the poor people. Corruption was ripe and injustice rooted deeply in Cambodian society. Et l'injustice était profondément enracinée dans la société cambodgienne. This resulted in people becoming poorer coup, and poorer. Les gens sont devenus Poor de plus people en plus to borrow money from les the rich in order to support their living for medical treatment and to pay tax. Subvenir à leurs besoins. That was the time the rich exploited the situation. Les riches ont they persecuted the poor. They demanded interest as they pleased, and monthly interest could skyrocket as much as 50% of the capital. As a result of this excessive interest rate, people could no longer afford to pay their debt, and creditors confiscated farms, rice paddy and houses, Ainsi, le and when they no longer had any farm, maison, rice, paddy, or les house, plus ni ferme, they were forced ni to work ni maison, as slaves ils in order des to pay debt that was never ended. Dont ils ne venir à bout. In many instances, Alors, bon, they were forced to sell their children to work for others souvent, ils and became their slaves merely in exchange for food. Comme des esclaves pour d'autres personnes en échange de nourriture. This exploitation and the poorness of these people was one of the Ce many causes et la misère de la that the CPK determined to resolve by liberating the nation and people from slavery, from human exploitation and invasion by other countries, de 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 by building a country where people could live equally and own the country with independence, self-mastery, self-reliance, and decide de own destiny de and nation. Un pays où on de son destin the CPK de did son not pays. design any policy or plan to have its people placed in slavery Le PCK by food deprivation, forced labor, or killing. À la population en esclavage, en les on the contrary, en les in mid-1976, the Standing Committee prepared and adopted the four-year planning to build socialism in all fields. Sur quatre ans pour la construction du socialisme dans the CPK line and policy was to promote la the la livelihood PCK of the people. À les moyens de subsistance this de la plan set forth a food regime for people Le plan that is, each person would receive certain tang or 312 kilograms of rice per year. So people would have enough food and they could have three to four meals per day les gens donc assez à manger with two courses, a soup and a fried à dish. Par jour, in addition, additional food and dessert would be provided every three days. In 1977, and every two days in 
assurée tous les trois jours. And every day from 1979 onwards. Pregnant women would be allowed a true man maternity leave after delivery. Sick people could rest depending on actual conditions. In addition, we prepared to increase machinery to reduce physical workload of the people. This shows that Nous the CPK stance was not to force people to work hard. I recall that one day I traveled to Simri province via Kampong Thom at night. Je me souviens I saw people walk to the rice fields. And I asked local cadres about this, and I was told that people had high commitment to work extra hours. Only after 1979 did I learn that local cadres lied to me. Concerning health care, the CPK prepared a four-year planning for medicine santé, with a total amount of $35,270,000. The four-year expenditure for clothing was $66,270,000. For housing, hygiene and culture, the four-year expenditure was $80,230,000. The CPK clearly and specifically set out these plans for zones and autonomous sectors to implement it. The CPK did not design any plan or policy to kill people. On the contrary, it had planned to increase population and not to reduce it. However, it is so regretful that zones and autonomous sectors did not implement the Standing Committee's decision. Pas mis en œuvre les décisions du comité permanent. Up to now, I can conclude and respond to questions put forth by the court and especially by the public that the strategic events that happened during the DK period were caused by the following reasons. Les événements stratégiques s'étant produits pendant la période du Kampuchea The CPK made incorrect decision to recruit suivantes. some cadres. As they betrayed, Le they did not grasp well the party line, de and some leaders occupied themselves with works in Phnom Penh and failed to visit cooperatives regularly. True. Some zone and certain, autonomous sector leaders and cadres were Vietnamese and American infiltrated agents who betrayed the revolution. Certain they carried out activities to destroy the CPK movement, the people, and the country of Cambodia. They did not follow the CPK policy and instructions. Instead, they killed and mistreated people by starving them and arbitrarily engaging them in forced labor. They concealed these facts and fabricated reports to the party central committee. They resorted to all kinds of methods to make people upset with and turn against the revolution. This weakened the revolution and made it vulnerable to enemy's invasion under the pretext to liberate the people, thus legitimize its invasion. As a matter of fact, 
the East Zone leaders deprived people of food and secretly exported rice to Vietnam. They were the ones who seemed to burn the outer skin crisp, crisp while leaving the inside raw. They excessively implemented the CPK policy. The first they left the inside raw infers that they did not engage in anything at all, but left their lower cadres do whatever they pleased. Three, a large number of cadres at zone, autonomous sector, district and cooperative level failed to sufficiently grasp the CPK line planning and policy. They failed to report the situation concerning hardship and shortage faced by the people. Instead, they falsified their reports to the party center by boasting about their achievement and success in leading their respective base. And to achieve what they fabricated in the report, they resorted to forcing people to overwork, reducing their food ration, and killing them arbitrarily. In summary, the CPK had clear reasons for the evacuation of people. The evacuation was to ensure their safety and to liberate them from slavery and injustice. It was never meant to place them in slavery. On the issue of fair trial, your Honours, it is my observation throughout this proceeding that some of my fundamental rights have been violated. Actually, I would not say the trial is because I am asking the court to find justice for me. And if the chamber is upset because of my criticism, then the injustice indeed falls upon me. However, if I don't raise the issue of my rights being violated, the chance to find justice for me is even slimmer as those rights are fundamental to seeking my justice. Je ne soulève pas. Concerning this point, I have carefully followed droits. and observed the court's proceedings, moins de and I submit that my many rights have been violated. À la suivi et Namely, de près one, inequality of arms in collecting evidence. Throughout the proceedings, my counsels were not allowed to conduct any investigation for the purpose of collecting evidence for my defense. However, the co-prosecutors had ample opportunity to conduct their own investigation since the beginning. My counsels were not allowed to seek for other witnesses except those whose names are on the co-investigating judges list. This apparently tied my counsel's arms and restricted them from gathering evidence for my defense, while the other side was afforded full opportunity to attack me freely. This has severely affected my defense team and my legitimate interest. True, failure to summon important witnesses. My defense counsel repeatedly requested the chamber to summon some important witnesses to testify before this chamber namely character witnesses and tool portray witnesses. However, the chamber denied such requests. 
Such decisions have seriously impacted the process of ascertaining the truth in this case. Three, bias in examination of witnesses before the chamber. The examination of witnesses is an important process in ascertaining the truth and clarify some uncertainties regarding some witnesses. Your honors are to rely upon these testimonies when you make your just decision. In this chamber, I can see that your honors have failed to consider this issue properly. Mais je constate que cette chambre n'a pas During the prosecution's examination of witnesses, your honors always afforded them témoins, the opportunity with minimal interruption, despite objections raised by the defense. The defense lawyers, however, were not that lucky as they were not allowed such opportunity. They were interrupted most of the time by the objections from the prosecution, and your honors always agreed with the prosecutor's, prosecutor's objections. And sometimes when the defense lawyers raised their objections, instead of being sustained, they were overruled and they received warnings from the president of the chamber. As we could see, the unequal treatment keeps important eye decided to no longer testify before the chamber anymore because we thought that, to your honors, our testimonies mean nothing as you are clearly biased. And the proceedings that have been conducted in this chamber are just for the sake of completing the procedure or making it look good in the eye of the public. In conclusion, based on the three grounds that I have stated above, it clearly shows that I did not carry out any plan to commit the crimes. I did not provide any support or encourage anyone to commit the crimes. Despite the fact that I had a role as Deputy Secretary of the CPK and President of the People's Representative Assembly, I did not have any knowledge of the crimes committed at the best level. Dans la perpétration de crime. Malgré Only rôle toward de the end of the DK period had I learned peuple, the treacherous acts committed by leaders at some zones, sectors, and bases. They had the intention de to destroy the CPK movement. And at that time, I did not have any effective authority to prevent those treacherous acts, nor had I any role in controlling the armed forces or local authorities. If I had any authority to lead or commit the alleged crimes during the DK period, Surely, the court that was established in 1979 by the People's Republic of Cambodia would have prosecuted and convicted me like Pol Pot and Ying Sari. Evidence of those crimes at the time was still fresh. And apparently, there is no need to wait for 38 years to try me. However, they knew that I had no authority and did not commit any crime. Nonetheless, I would like to express my deepest remorse and moral responsibility to all victims and Cambodian people who suffered during the democratic Cambodian regime. Vis -à -vis de toutes les victimes et du peuple As a matter of historical fact, the CPK's policy, plan, and plan were solely designed for one purpose and one purpose only, 
that is to liberate the country and people from colonization, imperialism, exploitation, extreme poverty, interfering and invasion by neighboring countries, especially by Vietnam. The CPK's policy was clear and specific. It wanted to create an equal society where people are the masters of their country for the purpose of independence, self-mastery, self-reliance, and deciding its own destiny and nation. The CPK movement was not designed for killing people or destroying the country. My conscience, my hope and wishes were destroyed by those who betrayed the movement. My people suffered and killed. My nation fell apart. Although the tragedy in the DK period was the result of the acts committed by those traitors, in the name of the Deputy Secretary of the Party that had the responsibility to disseminate and propagandize education about the CPK policy, I would like to sincerely apologize to the public, to the victims, their families, and all Cambodian people. And I still stand by my previously stated position that I am morally responsible for the loose and untidy control by the CPK. I wish to show my respect and pray for the lost souls that occurred by any means during the democratic Cambodian period. In short, Je through this trial, I can see that justice is circumstantial. However, reality remains unchanged forever. Black cloud can never cover the entire sunlight. Likewise, bad and immoral people cannot tell lies and hide the reality from the eye of the people and the popular masses forever. They cannot hide the reality of courageous struggle by the Cambodian people and the support afforded to them by the people in the world who loved peace and justice. Therefore, Your Honours, Based on the evidence and reasons I have stated above, and especially the closing statements made by my defense team, I respectfully submit to your honors to acquit me from all the charges and accordingly release me. I'm grateful to your honors. President, thank you. Security guard, please Merci. bring the accused uh, back into where he said Garde earlier. Garde de sécurité, veuillez reconduire l'accusé à sa place. President, the Chamber would like now to give the floor to Nunchi's counsel. La parole est maintenant donnée aux avocats de Nunchi. To make your final rebuttal statement, you may proceed. Pour leur réponse finale, vous avez la parole. Mr. President, Your Honours, good morning, Council. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. Everybody Bonjour, Mesdames et Messieurs les juges. Uh, uh, gallery, Bonjour à mes confrères, au Parti civil, aux membres du public. Indicated that I would speak for 30 minutes. But having heard afterwards that the Kyushan Pan team uh, will use only one hour of its time, la de um, I would hope that the chamber would allow me to speak 15 or 20 minutes extra uh, in my rebuttal to the uh, submissions yesterday of the prosecution. Afin que je puisse répondre aux répliques de l'accusation. Nevertheless, Mr. Hier. President, I will be, I will try to be as brief as pos possible je serai and try to respond directly possible. to the arguments je of the prosecution and the civil parties. Aux arguments. And in general, Mis en avant I would like to address the arguments civiles. advanced by each council. Les arguments and although I may by necessity move around because of the overlap between avocat, the various councils' arguments. Mais Ces arguments se chevauchent Mr. President, Your Honours, let me begin by addressing the comments advanced yesterday by the civil parties. The first observation I will make concerns the civil parties' parroting of the OCP's phrase slave state. We have heard this catchphrase now many times. Like an advertising campaign, the civil parties and the prosecution have flashed it in our faces like a neon sign, all in an attempt to argue that it epitomized the common purpose of the CPK. As we have expressed in both our brief and in oral argument, the use of this slogan, the slogan of slave state, is not correct and is in fact misleading. Not just because of its inaccuracy in describing the workings of the CPK, but also because it is based on evidence that is not at issue before this chamber. What do I mean when I say that this is not at issue before this chamber? I mean that it is grounded in witness statements and evidence that are outside the scope of case 002-01. Mr. President, this trial, as we are all well aware, concerns two population movements and the alleged Tupo Che crime site. Le prétendu site Cooperatives and their corresponding conditions are not a part of this trial. Les coopératives et les conditions Despite this, dans celle-ci ne font pas partie de ce procès. Et malgré cela, les procureurs et les parties civiles ont tenté par des moyens détournés de s'appuyer sur des déclarations de témoins Having failed to use this phrase in their closing briefs, the civil parties following the prosecution almost blindly now do the same. Sans avoir utilisé cette phrase dans leur mémoire de clôture, les parties civiles suivent aveuglement et font de même. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging individuals were not part of the trial. All of the witness statements alleging and eat it too. They have conjured a sensational and evocative tagline to advance their allegations, all the while keeping the evidence underlying it safe from scrutiny. As it is based on evidence that is not part of this trial, its relevance ends. En nous empêchant d'examiner ces preuves. The President, Mr. Nunjie, you may. Le président, 
Uh, please hold on, Mr. Nunchi has something to say. Mr. Nunchi, you may proceed. The President, Mr. Nunchi, you want to uh, be returned to the holding Monsieur cell downstairs? Uh, you may uh, leave the courtroom. Security guards are now instructed to bring Mr. Kiel, uh, Mr. Nunchi to the holding cell downstairs. Mr. Kope, uh, you may now uh, resume your uh, statement. Thank you, Mr. President. Maître Copé, merci, Monsieur le Président. As I said earlier, by using the slave state slogan, Comme je the prosecution donc, and civil parties have tried to have their cake and eat it too. Les et les they have conjured a sensational and evocative tagline to advance their allegation, all the while keeping the evidence underlying its safe from scrutiny, leurs as sans it is based on evidence that is not preuves. part of this trial, its relevance and substance remain untested by the defense. Dans la de ce procès, Indeed, la the defense itself requested this evidence be included in this trial, preuves, request that the prosecution objected to, underscoring uh, their fear that they did not want to risk exposing these allegations to the light of day. And Mr. President, the civil parties have applied this tactic in other ways. We can see it, for instance, in their claim that two million deaths occurred during the Democratic Kampuchea period. This allegation of two million deaths is again based on untested evidence. Why? Because the report it is based on is not part of this trial. It has not been examined by the parties. The, the, the demographer who created it has not been called here in this courtroom as an expert witness. Why? Again, Mr. President, the answer is simple, because the total number of deaths alleged Pourquoi during Democratic Cambodia is not a part of this trial. Le nombre total de victimes Could it be that both the civil parties and the prosecution are suffering from acute amnesia when faced with the charges that issue in case 002-01? Have they somewhat Conveniently, forgotten that this case only concerns two population movements and two portraits. While I could sympathize with the symptoms of a failing memory, even this explanation seems too generous. Whatever their excuse may be, Mr. President, trial chairman cannot condone this mode of proceeding. Allowing the prosecution and the civil parties to base claim claims on untested evidence outside the scope of this trial violates basic principles of the right to a fair trial. And the Chamber must accordingly give such assertions no way whatsoever. The, what I would like to call sensationalizing of witness statements has not been limited to outside the scope of the trial. Evidence within the scope of case 002-01 has been treated by the civil parties and the prosecution in the same manner. Examples of this are seen in the civil parties' use of allegations that Khmer Rouge cadre killed babies and people with glasses. These witness allegations cannot be used as the post of children for Democratic Cambodia. The reality is that these claims are unrepresentative of the experiences of individuals during Democratic Cambodia. Their misuse in describing a policy of the Khmer Rouge is therefore disingenuous, and it must be disregarded. Now, Your Honours, I would like to pause for a moment écarté. and reflect on the allegation made by the civil parties yesterday morning that in defending our clients we have somehow made a mockery of the civil parties. Client, nous aurions, nous nous serions moqués des This is unwarranted. Ceci the defense has never denied la the suffering of the civil parties. We have never called them liars. Nous in fact, we offer the utmost sympathy Oralité, to their suffering. We have, as we are tasked, 
with doing as defense attorneys, made very precise claims, defense, challenging the evidence against our client. Des arguments précis if the civil parties cannot appreciate this distinction, nous, it reveals si on their part, we would say, a serious misunderstanding about the role une grave of a defense attorney. In their rebuttal yesterday, the civil parties hier, attempted to paint a picture that the defense has put forward an entirely unrepresentative image of the CDK, an image, un they say, that is not supported by the evidence. Representatif du BCK. They have cited La to various references in our closing brief in an attempt to show that our assertions are outside the scope of the realities par les of Democratic Compatia. La partie civile they point to our use of language to further this argument, labeling such words as uh, evacuation and liberation as prime examples of what they call uh, uh, Orwellian newspeak. To this, Your Honours, we simply remind that parties that these terms are used uh, continually by all the parties throughout the course of this trial. These terms, Mr. Le President, are taken straight Orwell. from the closing order itself. Il faut and we can only speculate that if the lawyer for the civil parties had perhaps read the closing order with more care, such terms as evacuation or liberation si may not have come as such a surprise. In contrast, while the civil culture, parties coined phrases like after liberation straight to the killing fields, we have remained la measured in our use a créé of language. Expressions, par exemple, de la libération tout droit Finally, Mr. President, it is with irony Tandis that the defense addresses the final claim of the civil parties, enfin, that the defense is guilty of misrepresenting the evidence la to suit la civile, our own narrative. La Specifically, the civil parties attack our use of witness Lay Bonny's testimony that the physical conditions of evacuees during the second population movement was both good and normal. De Lay Bonny, the civil parties proclaim that, and I quote, if the defense had read but four lines more, unquote, of Le Bonny's testimony, it would have been apparent that Le Bonny also testified Elle aurait vu que that the evacuees had swollen bodies et que and that they received less food than pigs. Mr. President, Your Honour, the Defence did in fact en read réalité, those additional lines of testimony and noted that those lines did not address de the second personne. population movement. Nous avons but instead, reference conditions after resettlement in cooperatives in Poussat. La situation postérieure to the conditions in the new cooperatives, Le Bonny observed, and I quote, par aux that however when time passed by, we did not have enough food to eat. À que le temps we a ate passé, a food that was very little. Plus eu assez à manger, we ate food très peu à manger, that made us become, you know, mm, our body parts become swollen. Ingérée, notre and we believed at that time we noted that the pigs were even given more food than they gave to human beings. Plus que les quote. humains. Fin de citation. Your Honours, I now turn to Mesdames the co-prosecutor's submissions concerning our arguments about the fairness sur nos of this trial. Concernant du the co-prosecutors, in an attempt Tentant to gloss over these violations, advance the argument that in allowing the defence their de two allocated days of oral argument, soutient the Chamber somehow showed its commitment to the fair trial rights of our client. Le droit de à un procès the co-prosecutors seem to suggest that in granting us this time, temps all the fair trial, trial violations have been absolved. Ainsi entendre, que grâce à to ce this temps statement, we can only ask, is the standard du droit that low? Serait and it seems, Your Honours, that magie. the answer to that question is yes. Que poser la question suivante. Est-ce qu'on a placé la barre si bas La as the Chamber knows, oui, the chambre, most important of these fair trial violations concerns la witness Heng Samrin, du droit à un procès the witness at the heart of our fair trial Heng argument, Samrin, whose presence at this trial dont la we called ici earlier a non-negotiable bare minimum 
for securing a fair proceeding. Une condition minimale non négociable pour Heng Samrin, que puisse parler who is a witness of paramount importance to the charges Yen at issue this trial. était un témoin d'une importance cruciale of Pen, concernant the events les portrait, accusations retenues pour son procès, à savoir l'accusation de Phnom Penh, pour les événements de Phnom Penh et la politique alléguée consistant à tuer Heng Samrin, a witness in possession of important exculpatory evidence that directly exonerates our client from the allegation that he had intended the killing of former Lonol soldiers and officials. Heng Samrin, the one and only character witness requested by Yun Chia. Heng Samrin était aussi le seul témoin de personnalité demandé par la défense de Yun Toutes les personnes ici présentes devraient se poser une question. Qu'ont dit l'accusation et la partie civile sur le fait que la Chambre n'a pas cité à comparaître Heng Samrin Rien du tout. Absolute silence. Silence total. The co-prosecutors and the civil parties have not responded to the substance of our complaint at all. Même de notre grief. And there are numerous arguments the parties could have Les made pu regarding our request to call Heng Samrin during this trial. De voir citer à But nothing Heng Samrin. has been said. Mais rien a été dit. For instance, they could have Par argued exemple, that the evidence ils pu Heng Samrin had to offer was not important. Que possédait Heng Samrin or that it was evidence that would have been established by different witnesses. They could have argued that evidence of Nguyen Chia's character was not relevant, le or argued that de there were other higher-ranking military witnesses that could have been heard. They could have attempted to Ils argue there was already sufficient evidence of Nguyen Chia's intent, and that Heng Samrin's testimony was therefore not needed. De Chia, en conséquence de quoi but did they make any of these claims? No, they did not. Mais de tels arguments ont-ils été avancés? No. Mr. President, Your Honours, Heng Samrin is the elephant in the room. C'est l'éléphant dans la pièce. The co-prosecutors and the civil parties dare not speak. Dont civile n'ose pas parler. Why is it that they are rendered mute by this man? Pourquoi est-ce que cet homme les rend comme muets? Why not talk about it like Craig Edgerton did this morning in the Phnom Penh Post? Pourquoi ne pas en parler comme l'a fait ce matin Craig Edgerton dans le Phnom Penh Post? We can think of two reasons only. They either agree that his presence is of paramount importance and a fair trial cannot be had without his testimony, or they are simply not allowed to even mention his name. Ils ne sont tout simplement pas autorisés ne fût-ce qu'à mentionner son nom. Your Honours would be a remarkable position about these proceedings. Dans les deux cas, cela en dit long sur ce procès. If the answer is si that the parties cannot even discuss the nature and degree of this fair trial violation and the extent to which the co-prosecutors remain in the government's clutches is even worse than we thought. Est davantage sous if the answer is that a fair trial is impossible without his presence, si est then we have confirmation from all parties that our clients' fair trial rights have been irreparably harmed. De notre client à un procès équitable ont été violés de façon irrémédiable. M. Kumidjan a également abordé notre argument selon lequel il est fondamentalement politique. We heard him say yesterday that he denies that claim. Il a dit qu'il rejetait une telle affirmation. He says that this trial is not about politics, but about law. Mais bien de droit. Mr. President, we disagree. We have submitted that a proceeding such as this pour nous, could never separate law ne from politics. Séparer le droit de la politique. That a tribunal Selon such nous, as this infuses law with politics. Droit et politique. And let it be clear, this que view is not constructed clair, from thin air. Cet avis ne surgit pas it is not nulle woven ce pas in the minds of a paranoid defense lawyer. It is a viewpoint with a long pedigree in the history of international criminal proceedings. Dans les procès pénaux internationaux. The Indian judge, Le Justice Paul, gave serious consideration in his dissenting opinion at the Tokyo Tribunal to the question of whether victors of a war la question de savoir si can les fairly judge its losers. And respected, uh, respected academics did the same. Respectés, on fait la même chose. 
Munchi peut être jugé de façon équitable par les représentants des deux principaux vainqueurs, c'est là un argument sérieux qui mérite une réflexion sérieuse. Et si ce procès est un procès de droit qui concerne les faits et non pas la politique, pourquoi est-ce que l'accusation systématiquement des faits qui sont juridiquement en rapport avec les faits reprochés. Chamber, Monsieur Lysak, uh, yesterday, that the hier, a dit brief que le mémoire final de l'accusation incluait 40 pages d'analyse historique. But the question is which Mais la history? question est de savoir de quelle histoire il s'agit. Pourquoi l'accusation décrit-elle les actes de violence à l'égide du PCK no antérieur à 1975 sans pratiquement mentionner les bombardements américains Or of the atrocities committed sans by mentionner les atrocités commises contre les cadres du PCK par les forces de l'Union Est-ce que le PCK menait la guerre contre un fantôme ou contre un ennemi Does anyone doubt that the intent, on peut intent of the CPK's alleged policies against enemies du PCK changes radically ennemis, in light of the ruthlessness of the enemy it was actually fighting? Impitoyable de l'ennemi auquel no le are more powerful face. actors equally en responsible outre, for, con, for conduct identical plus puissants, to that for which our client sends charges accused of identical crimes. Et poursuivi, notre client ne sont pas accusés de crimes identiques. Est-ce que l'accusation oserait accuser ceux qui dirigent le pays, ceux qui sont responsables d'avoir mis en œuvre les politiques de notre client Monsieur le Président, Madame, 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 la réponse à cette question est bien sûr négative. La réponse est que l'accusation qui prétend que ce procès n'a rien à voir avec la politique n'ose même pas prononcer le nom de Heng Samrin. Elles n'osent même pas contester l'affirmation de la défense comme quoi l'instruction et le procès n'étaient pas équitables. Let me now, Mr. President, à présent, turn to the crimes which were discussed jointly by Mr. Rayner and Mr. Lysak. I will begin with the evacuation of Phnom Penh. With regard to the evacuation of Phnom Penh, I would simply like to clarify a serious misunderstanding of our oral argument which became apparent yesterday and which may have caused some confusion during our client's speech here this morning. Hier et qui aurait pu causer de la confusion au cours de l'intervention de notre client ce matin. Comme indiqué dans notre mémoire et comme répété par notre client ce matin, l'évacuation de Plompen était motivée par plusieurs considérations. Ils incluaient l'approvisionnement en denrées alimentaires à Plompen et au Cambodge plus généralement. And the state of Cambodia's economic infrastructure, including its rice paddies, as of 17 April 1975. Our submissions before the investigating judges in this chamber consistently emphasize all of these factors as integral to the decision to evacuate and the manner in which d'évacuer et de la manière dont cette évacuation a eu lieu. Yesterday, Hier, l'accusation a épargné une seule phrase des remarques faites par mon confrère cambodien la semaine passée comme quoi l'évacuation aurait été mise en œuvre même en l'absence de crise alimentaire à Phnom Penh. Prosecutors argue that this sentence amounts to a concession that neither the American bombing nor the food supply were relevant to the forced transfer charges. Now, Mr. President, that of course was a misstatement of our position and of reality. Those facts are critically relevant now, as they have always been to Munchi's defense. Dans le contexte de la défense de l'Union européenne. First, as Sonarun explained, the bombing devastated Cambodia's economic infrastructure and its ability to produce food. That reality was a fundamental aspect of the CPK's conclusion that the economy could not support unproductive cities in a society in which economic production was driven entirely 
by the rice paddy. Subvenir aux besoins de villes improductives dans une société où la production économique Second, dépendait Sanrun also explained entièrement the evacuation would have looked very different comme l'a expliqué had Maître an impending catastrophe of starvation not existed. Bien différente s'il n'y avait pas During yesterday's hearing, as they have throughout this trial, the co-prosecutors repeatedly attacked the evacuation, not for the fact Hier, that it happened, comme pendant tout le but procès, for the way it happened, a including its immediacy and the fact that it affected all of the residents of Phnom Penh. Pour son existence même, mais bien pour la but those are precisely the features of the evacuation which were driven by the threat of imminent starvation, pour le fait including the fact tous les de that six Penh. days' worth Or, ce sont of food remained in the city on 17 April 1975. So, Mr. President, the arguments that you heard yesterday which implied that we had somehow abandoned the food supply and U.S. bombing arguments were misguided. En ville. Les arguments entendus hier, selon My final quoi, remark nous about the evacuation uh, of Phnom Penh is that both the civil parties erronés. and the co-prosecutors again make the claim that Nunchia did not subject Nunchia subjected himself to 12 days Or, of cross-examination, some of which was described by Mr. Lysak yesterday. Hier, Lysak, on a parlé. And he refused to continue Sina only because of the violations of his right to challenge the evidence against him during the appearance of Mr. Steve Hedder. À à les les so, Mr. President, Your Honours, hopefully we can put to rest this myth that our Hedder. client refused to testify about the evacuation. Faire un sort à ce mythe selon quoi notre client aurait refusé de déposer sur l'évacuation. I would like to turn now to certain comments made by the co-prosecutors concerning the second population movement. While addressing the second population movement, the co-prosecutors misconstrued our argument, claiming that we had said that the second transfer was implemented by rogue zonal leaders, that the second transfer was in fact a rogue operation. We have never said it was rogue. This portrayal of the second movement is their formulation and it is nonsense. Mr. President, our point was and still is that the second movement was the prerogative of the zones. That both Rosnim and Sao Pim, leaders of the two zones allegedly instrumental in the second population movement, were not mere zone leaders, but powerful members of the standing committee, as a matter of fact, founding members of the CPK, and at least equally as powerful as Nguyen and Pol Pot. And that the evidence before Nous this chamber supports the conclusion that it was the zones that had primary control and authority over the second uh, population zone qui ont exercé leur control Next, Mr. President, I will turn to two portraits. Je vais We have many things to say about two portraits and its underlying dessus. policy. But because of the time, I will limit myself to six key points. points. First, the co-prosecutors yesterday simply say nothing about any of the direct evidence that no policy of executing law and soldiers and officials existed. Quant à l'absence de toute preuve directe, they say nothing about people. They say nothing about Heng Samrin. They say nothing about Ukun Chun. They do not challenge it. They do not contest it. They do not tell that the chamber that is uh, unreliable. They also do not tell the chamber how to resolve the direct contradiction between their position and this clear evidence from well-placed CPK inside. 
As I have already observed, we claim that there was a violation of our client's right to a fair trial so serious that it required dismissal of all charges concerning the court And again, the co-prosecutors did not even mention it. And that is, we submit remarkable to say the least. Second, Mr. President, the co-prosecutors offered this chamber two pieces of evidence that a policy to execute law no soldiers and officials existed. And the first piece of evidence was a photo, une photo of a group of people at the Ministry of Information, de gens au de information supposedly on 17 April 1975. Now, Mr. President, Your Honours, I would like to show that photo, photo uh, on the screen. And with your uh, permission, Mr. President, I would like to do that now. Le faire dès uh, and maybe uh, to the AV unit we could show it a few times in a row, because it's part of a little video. Plusieurs fois, car elle fait partie d'un film vidéo. The President, you may proceed. Moments after this photograph is taken, this troop of MPs and bureaucrats are led to a nearby tennis court and massacre. To round up and execute all those who are linked to the Lon Nol establishment. Moments after Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. President. The co-prosecutors called this photo of some Sur people photo, calmly standing around with their arms folded, calme, les bras croisés, and I quote, et very strong evidence que là une preuve, that every soldier forte, and every official of the Khmer Republic who was killed de la uh, Khmer, in qui ont all été of Cambodia on or around 17 April 1975 avril, was in fact killed pursuing été en application to a CPK policy. This photo, Mr. Cette President, photo was one of the two pieces of evidence that the co-prosecutors claim conclusively proves the existence of that policy. De de façon telle now maybe the co-prosecutors see a secret code in this photo that, that we do not. Code secret qui nous and contrary to the co-prosecutors' claims, we responded to this evidence directly in our oral argument last week. We conceded that the people nous depicted in this photo were present at the Ministry of Information, which is all, tout all that this photo shows. Cette photo. We explained nous why that fact is irrelevant to any supposed execution policy. Co-prosecutors chose not to respond to those arguments. arguments. Instead, they just Elle reiterate the fact that these people were present at the Ministry, au ministry of Information. Information. And this supposedly Cette very strong evidence is present is très irrelevant. Très solide et dénué de pertinence. The second piece of supposedly conclusive evidence was a series of quotations from Duyck. As we have argued Comme before, Duyck has admitted Duc to having had no basis to make any conclusions with regard to CPK policy. His testimony is irrelevant. However, I will fois, add that even the irrelevant excerpts si cited by the co-prosecutors yesterday establish that no execution policy existed. Être pris yesterday, the prosecution quoted Duyck saying, and I quote, politique. During that initial stage, people were evacuated and then some of the senior soldiers were arrested and secretly killed. End of quote. We do not know how we came to this conclusion. But even this evidence suggests that only senior soldiers were apparently executed. And even then, that only some of those senior soldiers were executed. And the co-prosecutor's other evidence from Duyck was just as inconsistent with this proposed policy. As the prosecution noted, Judge Leverne asked Duyck in case 001 Comme but the people linked to the Long Nol regime were executed. Now, Duke's answer, Duke's answer was as follows, and I quote. Je cite. People in Long Nol's regime were classified into three categories. 
first category la première catégorie était celle who were des gens secretly. qui devaient être euh, écrasés secrètement. Now this is the point where the co-prosecutors stopped reading. Que a mis fin à sa But as your chamber is well aware, the excerpt continues. Cet extrait se poursuit. And I quote: Je vais citer. The second category la deuxième catégorie to the people who were detained in the re-education camp. Détenus dans des camps de réinsertion. Et la troisième catégorie était celle de ceux considérés comme les membres du peuple nouveau. Fantastique. So this is the court prosecutor's final concluding evidence of a policy of systematically hunting down and executing all non-law soldiers and officials. Et à exécuter tous les soldats et tous les officiers de l'armée. Or, cela prouve qu'aucune politique de ce type Mr. President, my third of the six points about two portrays concerns pattern evidence. Les preuves attestant de l'existence d'un schéma récurrent. Yesterday, the co-prosecutors did not even attempt to contest our systematic demonstration that no such pattern existed. Systematique montrant qu'il n'existait pas de schéma récurrent. Mr. Rayner spoke very theatrically about the systematic nature of the pattern. Du caractère systématique de ce schéma. You might remember he asked the chamber. Five or six times, whether it was a coincidence, a coincidence that killings occurred in exactly the same way across the country. And our question is this, Mr. President: Is it a coincidence that the co-prosecutors failed to identify one single witness proving the existence of this pattern, which they say happened everywhere? Qui se serait soi-disant reproduit partout d'après la situation Est-ce une coïncidence que les procureurs n'aient répondu à aucun des arguments concrets que nous avons avancés durant notre plaidoirie Mr. Lysak a également abordé les supposés preuves attestant de l'existence d'un schéma récurrent. Il a dit à la Chambre que la défense avait, je cite, une thèse concernant la supposée exécution de soldats de l'ONOL en avril 1975. Il a dit que notre thèse c'était que les exécutions avaient eu lieu dans le sud-ouest et le nord-ouest, mais pas ailleurs. En réalité, nous n'avons aucune thèse concernant l'exécution de soldats de l'ONOL. Our only thesis is that the co-prosecutors have failed manifestly and completely to establish the existence of a centrally directed policy. The reasons for that conclusion are firstly that it is inconsistent with the direct evidence. Une telle politique centralisée ne cadre pas avec les preuves directes. Deuxièmement, les soi-disant preuves attestant de l'existence d'un schéma récurrent sont dépourvues de fiabilité. Troisièmement, ces preuves déjà non fiables se concentrent en plus dans les zones sud-ouest et nord-ouest. Dès lors, cela ne sera pas avec une quelconque politique s'étendant à tout le pays. Une accusation ne conteste pas cela pour établir l'existence d'une politique en s'appuyant sur des preuves non fiables qui n'ont pas été mises à l'épreuve pendant le procès et qui concernent uniquement une petite partie du pays. L'accusation devrait être prête à fournir à la Chambre une explication bien plus ordinaire. Mr. Lysak a proposé une possible explication. He suggested that maybe there were more Lono soldiers in the northwest and southwest zone than elsewhere in the country. Yet at the same time, he does not offer the chamber even a shred of evidence in support of this proposition. The evidence we showed the chamber last week demonstrated overwhelmingly that Lono soldiers were not executed in liberated zones prior to 1975. There is no reason to believe that Lono soldiers did not continue living in those zones until and after April 1975. Nor does the evidence merely show that fewer Lono soldiers and officials were killed in the special, central, north, Et les preuves the ne montrent pas and the seulement zones in April 1975. que moins de soldats et de fonctionnaires de l'ONOL sont morts dans les zones spéciales centrales nord-est et nord-est en avril 1975. We have adduced substantial evidence affirmatively demonstrating that law and order officials who were, present, who were present in the east zone or within the control of east zone troops were not harmed. 
présent dans la zone est ou sous like le Rainer, des troupes de Mr. la zone est, n'ont pas été touchés. Tout comme Mr. Reynor, Mr. Isaac ne dit rien concernant ses preuves et n'avance aucune statement of a single witness. justifiant son analyse des preuves que nous avons présentées la semaine Mr. dernière et qui, d'après lui, then suggested that the concentration of evidence in the southwest zone would be consistent with party center policy because Paul Polk had a close relationship to the southwest zone. Le fait que des preuves soient concentrées dans la zone sud-ouest correspond. It seems he would like this chamber to make two conclusions. Correspond. He would like this chamber to conclude first that Tom Polk was Pot close to Paul Polk and second. That because Tamok was close to Pol Pot, que, everything that happened in the southwest zone Tamok était proche de Pol Pot reflected the intent of the party center. Tout ce qui s'est produit dans la zone sud-ouest reflétait no l'intention du centre du parti. Claim. Mais aucune preuve n'existe pour étayer ces deux affirmations, ni l'une ni l'autre. So much as five minutes ni of witness ni testimony. Neither claim has been the subject of a single Before yesterday, neither claim had been the subject of five minutes of debate before the chamber. And just last month, the co-prosecutor's position was that executions happened everywhere. Mr. President, just last week, the co-prosecutor's position was that the executions happened everywhere in Cambodia. And five minutes before Mr. Lysak took the floor, the co-prosecutor's position was that executions took place everywhere. Never did they try to link events in any particular part of the country with the party center. And they did not have to, because the position was that everything happened the same way everywhere. Une région particulière du pays et le centre du parti. Pourquoi l'aurait été fait? It is critical to realize that Mr. Lysak's theory would be relevant to Nunchia's criminal liability only if Nunchia conspired with Tamok and was named. But not with South Pin or Nesaran to execute one of the soldiers. Nunchea avait could that comploté avec Tamok et Rosnim, mais non avec Saupi Minay Saran, pour exécuter des soldats Lots de la main. C'est une théorie. But the chamber, Cette that théorie point, has pourrait-elle never être vraie C'est possible, has never, beaucoup de choses sont possibles, mais la Chambre n'a jamais it, envisagé it. cette possibilité. There's no et jusqu'à hier, les co-procureurs ne l'ont jamais affirmé. Aucune preuve n'existe pour étayer cette thèse, et la Chambre n'a donc pas. Mr. President, my fourth of the six points about Tul Poitre concerns the co-prosecutor's assertion that we failed even to address the core claim about Tul Poitre. They describe their core claim as being that Nunchi participated in a joint criminal enterprise to execute class enemies and all those opposed to the CPK. In fact, we showed the chamber that at worst, the CPK categorized soldiers and officials along with other groups, such as monks and intellectuals, who were never, people who were never subject to a policy the co-prosecutor's position that the CPK viewed soldiers and officials with suspicion is insufficient as a matter of law to establish our clients' criminal liability. The closing order alleges that at two portraits, soldiers and officials were indiscriminately murdered en masse. And it follows that only a policy that required executions of soldiers and officials en masse is of any relevance to the Chamber's deliberations. Et donc, Abstract class theory without a clear link to a policy of systematic execution is plainly insufficient. De et de en masse. Mr. President, Your Honor, it's critical to recognize here that this difference between the CPK's general suspicion of rep Republican officials pas. and its supposed decision to execute those officials summar summarily, La difference that this difference is exactly, exactly the subject of Heng Samrin's statement to Ben Kiernan. Heng Samrin does not say that Nguyen Chia never thought about former regime officials. 
Et cette différence He doesn't say that those officials were not a subject of discussion. Ce dont parle Heng Lin dans What he says is that when the party center Heng decided Lin how to deal with Republican officials, ne dit pas they, quote, I, I, I quote him, did not say kill. Instead, they said, régime, and I quote him again, don't allow them to remain in the framework, unquote. Mr. Mr. President, this distinction cut straight to the ambiguity at the heart of the co-prosecutor's allegation uh, about the CPK's treatment of so-called opponents, which is that there is simply no evidence that such people were systematically executed. That brings me, Mr. President, to my fifth point about two portraits, which is that the co-prosecutor's submissions yesterday prove that they agree with us. Because while they claim their principal submission to be that soldiers were enemy of the party, they end up saying something much narrower and much simpler. They end up saying that there was a policy to kill, and I quote, officers of a certain rank and above. Now, of course, we dispute this. But the point is that the co-prosecutors know that the vague class theory Duke claims to have read in the revolutionary flag was never intended to, and never did, translate to Even they know that they cannot credibly claim that our client intended to execute soldiers and officials regardless, regardless of rank. And as, as we observed last week, the co-prosecutors failed even to assert that the alleged victims at Tour Portray were anything more than ordinary soldiers and civilians. Yesterday, they conceded that our client never intended to execute ordinary soldiers or civilians. Now put together, these concessions establish that Nguyen Chia never intended the execution of the alleged victims at Tour Portray. And this alone, Mr. President, requires the Chamber to acquit Nguyen Chia of all crimes charged in connection with Tu Po my, my, my sixth and final point is that the co-prosecutors co say nothing at all, nothing at all about the possibility that if any killings did take place at Tu Po they were constituted locally directed revenge killings. Let's not forget, Mr. President, the liberation of Pursat marked the end of a years-long bloody civil war. The alleged victims were supposedly the CPK's former opponents. Revenge killings under these circumstances are typical. Your Honor, Mr. President, my very last comments today in this trial will concern the co-prosecutor's analysis yesterday. Of Rosnim's role in the CPK and the role of zone leaders more generally. Now, the, the critical point, and I cannot stress this enough, is that Rosnim was not a mere quote zone leader. He himself was a member of the standing committee. He himself was, according to the co-prosecutors, reasoning an equal participant in the standing committee's practice of democratic centralism. Now, yesterday, the co-prosecutor said that Nguyen Chia met with Rosnim every three months in the Northwest Zone. And our question is, so what? What could the fact that Rosnim met Nguyen Chia possibly say about the content or nature of their relationship? The co-prosecutors tell us that, that at one of these meetings, Nim told Nguyen Chia about the execution of Nguyen Chia's uncle, Xu Heng. Now, Mr. President, we have trouble seeing their point. Nim, not, Nim did not ask our client for permission to kill Xu Heng. He was not, as the co-prosecutors observed, afraid to tell him he had executed Xu Heng. They asked why would Nguyen tell Nguyen Chia about Xiu Hing and not about Tu Po Tre. And to us, Mr. President, the answer is obvious. 
two portraits was none of Noirtier's concern. The death of his uncle quite obviously was. Now the hard evidence of the relationship amongst the various members of the standing committee, including those who were also zone leaders, is almost completely non-existent. As we saw last week, just about the only person able to speak with any authority is Ing Sari. And he says that within Ankar, and I quote, each zone Dans was independent. Qui chef de zone Kill as you please, do as you please. Comme nous End of quote. Rosdam's flippant attitude towards Shu's Heng's execution corroborates exactly that description. The best the co-prosecutors can find in response is a small handful of telegrams purporting to show Rosnim seeking advice or guidance from the party center. They do not mention the consistent testimony that communication from the party center to the zones was limited and mainly concerned goods requested by the zones. That Nuinchia almost never sent telegrams to anybody. And even this very small selection of telegrams are all in 1977 et 1978, years after two A period, Mr. President, of years in which Ben Keenan tells us the sense control over Northwest Zone forces was, and I quote, gradually increasing. End of des années où ben Kiernan le confirme, the only document they showed you during the time period remotely relevant to these charges showed only that information was conveyed to the party center without any request for advice or instructions delivered to the zone. The question is why is every que les other document that the co-prosecutors presented from a period so far from April 1975? To paraphrase the co-prosecutors, we must ask, was that a coincidence? Mr. President, Your Honor, there is only one hard reality about Rosalind. That reality is that he was ultimately purged. The co-prosecutors tell the chamber that he was purged, but for them, the story ends there. And for us, it is just the beginning. The co-prosecutors do not take the next step and tell you why Rosnin was purged. The answer is, Mr. President, he was considered a traitor. He was considered a traitor because he was deliberately acting contrary to party policy. He deliberately imposed harsh conditions in the northwest zone for the purpose of destabilizing the party center. Mr. President, Your Honor, the co-prosecutors have never adequately answered a simple question. These are my last words. If Nuenchia could so easily control Rosnim's behavior, why did they deem it necessary to use military force against him? The President. Thank you, Council. The President. Merci, the time is now appropriate for lunch adjournment. The chamber shall adjourn now and resume at 1.30 this afternoon. Security guards are now instructed to bring Garde Mr. Kyo Sampon to the holding cell downstairs and have him return to this courtroom this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now adjourned.